So OpenAI has once again made all the headlines because they've released a brand new tool. Now it's not a brand new model. This is using their O3 model, the most recent up to date one. But the difference here is that they have put it together in such a way so that now it's a new tool in that now they have what's called deep research. It's interesting that that name was used, right? Deep research, kind of a counter to deep seek maybe. I don't know, but the thing is that this is out there. This is a new powerful tool and we need to understand what it is and why this is important for academia. Now, of course, I don't like to focus on tools that you have to pay for, but this is something important because of its capabilities. So we should at least be aware of it and see what we can do with free tools to try and somewhat approach this new capability. So first, let's see what it's all about and what it is. So we like to announce a next big step. We are introducing a capability called deep research. What is deep research? Deep research is a model that does multi-step research on the internet. And what it does is it discovers content, it synthesizes content, and it reasons about these, this content, adapting its plan as it uncovers more and more information. So one important feature of deep research, why we call it deep research instead of just research, is that we've removed latency constraints from the model. Typically, models return fairly quickly, but deep research models, they can take five, sometimes even 30 minutes before they come back with an answer. Deep research is accessible from a button right here in the beginning of ChatGPT. And from here, you can immediately put in any query and it's gonna send it off to deep research. Uh, I'm a PM at OpenAI, and one of the things that we like to think about is what new features and products should we build? Uh, one of the things we've been tossing around is should we build a new language translation app? And so this is something that I can ask Deep Research to go and research for me. So I'm actually going to type in this query. Um, I want to learn a little bit more about all the different markets that I could go off and target. So I'm asking Deep Research, help me find iOS and Android adoption rates, the percent of folks who want to learn another language, and the change in mobile penetration over the past couple of years, and give me that difference between the top developed countries and developing countries. And I also really want this information in a formatted uh, report with some tables and a clear recommendation on what the best emerging opportunities are for ChatGPT. So this is a query that would have taken me hours to put together. But with deep research, I can just immediately kick it off. Is this your actual uh, side project at OpenAI? <laughs> this is my side hustle when I'm not working on deep research. Uh, so what you'll first see is that deep research comes back with a set of clarifying questions. This just, is just like a PM. Just like, <laughs> uh, this is super important because if deep research is going off for five, 30 minutes, you really want to get those requirements right. And so there's a couple of questions that it's giving to us right now. You know, how do you want mobile penetration uh, set up? Do you want overall adoption rates or specific categories? So the percentage of folks uh, beyond general interest or really engaged interest, these are really good questions that you'd expect an analyst to want to ask you when you're giving them a really tough prompt. And so it's really important that you can capture these up front. So I might answer something along the lines of, you know, I want to look at this as a, you know, give me penetration as a percentage of users and look at overall usage and then make your best assumptions on the rest. You know, the model is really good at taking information that's sometimes specified and a little bit more open-ended and using that to go off on a mission and get all the information that you need. So you can see right now, Deep Research has taken all of that and synthesized it and started kicking off its own research process. Deep Research is really good across a number of different knowledge work domains. And so we've seen folks being able to use it for market research, for different academic uh, you know, areas across physics, uh, you know, computer science, biology. Um, I've been using it myself to try to PM a little bit on the side. Um, and we're really hopeful that it'll be useful for you too at work. But in the meantime, while we've kicked it off, it's already looked at 29 different sources and gone through a lot of different information. Deep Research just put together its full analysis. It took us 11 minutes, and in that process, it looked at 29 different sites really in depth. And as you can see live on this live stream, it gave us a perfectly formatted report. Here you can see the mobile market analysis for mobile adoption and language learning. We got a nice introduction, our different adoption trends, everything put together in a really great uh, report style where you can see mobile trend penetration over time and a ton of different data. And as you go down, you can see it not only has information over here, but also different uh, 
um, table formats and ways that it's presented the, the data in a way that's super digestible. So one of the other things that's really cool about this model is that you're able to click in and see all the different sources that it's able to cite. Uh, over here, you can see every uh, citation that the model's encountered, and also different sites that it might have encountered that it you know, didn't necessarily put into the final output, but it wants to let you know that it uh, found along the way. In going to OpenAI's own website, talking about an introduction to deep research, and again, this is brand new, it just came out, it goes through and explains what it is, and basically it's a tool that will help you to find, analyze, synthesize hundreds of online sources to create a comprehensive report at the level of a research analyst, powered by a version of the upcoming OpenAI O3 model that's optimized for web browsing and data analysis. It leverages reasoning to search, interpret, analyze massive amounts of text, images, and PDFs on the internet, pivoting as needed in research to information it encounters. So yeah, the results are pretty impressive in that it is basically like a research analyst. It's that level, PhD level of its capabilities. Why? Because the model itself can now reason in some aspects and it's able to, as it's doing the search, as it's going, doing the analysis, it's it's an agent, right? It's an AI agent. It has that capability. So it can pivot and research aspects of it. It can go from one search to a different search and look at it differently. So there's lots going on here with its capabilities, and it is definitely agenic. I found this to be really interesting in that we saw in the video example the huge amount that it was able to, to create. And this is a nice comparison where they compare GPT-4.0 with deep research. And the results are pretty, pretty massive as far as what the capabilities are in the detail and level of information that we're able to get from the deep research as compared to just the simple chat GPT regular search and results. So I want to come in here and talk about that, right? Where we're comparing two different things there, regular chat GPT that's free or the paid version. Now the paid version right now is only available to the people that are paying the, the high level $200 a month. Eventually the people that pay the $20 a month are also gonna get it. They haven't said anything as far as the people that are just using the, the free version. So it might not even be a tool that's available. Now there's lots of talk right now in the, the internet community about how, hey, this deep research capability Google has already had this out for several months now because they have a product, they have an aspect of, of their Gemini, and it's also called Deep Research. <laughs> so that's available there, and that is part of the $20 subscription. So you don't have to pay $200, that's part of the $20. Now it's using their advanced Gemini, right, their 2.0, but their results are also very powerful. So that's definitely look worth looking into because it's very comparable in the way that it does it. It does use some reasoning, some agenic type aspects as well in order to find information and put a nice, very detailed uh, report together for you at a very high level. So looking at the Google Deep Research, that should also be something that you do when comparing as to, do I want to pay for, for, for OpenAI for this capability here, or do I wanna go with, with Gemini, right? So those are two things that you should definitely compare. Again, very comparable as far as the capabilities. Yes, OpenAI, I think, is still a little bit higher because of the model capabilities. It's, it's brand new and in reaching new heights. And here's some examples of that. In their reports, they talk about different aspects as far as improved accuracy overall when compared to many other AIs out there to include Gemini, to include DeepSeek, it's interesting that now it, that's rated in here because there's so much attention to it, but it's supposedly even better than that, much better. And then with other comparisons, it also rates very highly as far as being able to complete expert level tasks, using reasoning, being able to create and succeed in all sorts of different comparisons. Still has limitations, of course, the limitations on usage, limitations on its capabilities, and as always, it isn't perfect. But I also want to show you what I was able to do as far as comparing it with what you can do with the free version of ChatGPT. And then as the, the example showed there, as far as the capabilities of that deep research. So I actually went into ChatGPT and I asked it about this new tool about deep research. And it gave me some good information as far as what it was. 
And then I asked it, hey, what about those people that we can't use deep research because we don't have the expensive subscription? What could we do? And it's very interesting in that what it said are things such as defining your research task clearly using ChatGPT free version of information gathering, but then breaking it down and having it structured. Um, and so what I did is I went through that and the way that I formulated my initial prompt was just like they did, except I used a more advanced prompt formula for this, right? I told to assume a specific role. So that I think added to it. And then I also gave it this part of our advanced prompt formula where I asked it for, hey, do you need any additional information? And that was very interesting because it then, it did pose additional questions for me, asking for a clarification as far as different things such as country selection criteria, time frame, metrics, targeted market analysis, uh, data sources and references. So if I were to have gone in and give it more specific information like it was asking me, I would have gotten even better of a result. Instead, what I, what I chose to do is I just put in what the example did, right? In that example that OpenAI team was using, they just said this and then make your best assumptions for the rest. But even in just doing that, I was able to get a much better result than the comparison that they demonstrated in their website because it was able to go through and put it together and give me some nice information as far as a market analyst report, giving me some key information with some key metrics. And it gave me a very nice overall spreadsheet of information, developing markets, lots of insights, strategic recommendations. So it gave me a pretty good one but look at the references. My, these are pretty good references, but the references here are only about five or six references. As you remember from the actual demonstration that they did, the OpenAI team, the number of references that that report was able to generate was like 26, 27 different references. So you see the level of detail is much more because it's using a more advanced model with agenic capabilities. So that's a difference. Now, I could go even further with mine in that I could break it up into subtasks, having it do just a portion of it and then putting it all together later on. That's an aspect as well. But we're limited with certain things such as token windows, the size of my input, the size of the, the output, which the new model will have greater capabilities. So those are things to consider as far as how you could use it on your own and the capability that it's doing. Now, this is very important for us in academia for several different reasons. The first one is just to see what AI can do now. You see the agenic capabilities, you see the level of detail. I mean, that's high level market analysis. And that was just the, the main demonstration. They, they gave a couple of other demonstrations as far as looking for something to purchase and being able to save you time by going through and reviewing tons and tons of websites to help you to make a decision. Uh, finding content on the web like a needle in a haystack because it's able to be hygienic and search multiple ways and multiple things. It will be able to help you find information that you're looking for. That's really beneficial when you're doing research. I don't know if you've ever run into that where you remember some research, some aspect of it, but you don't remember the details like the author or the title. But if you just put in this information, it'll help you to search the web and come up with this information. So a lot of capabilities there. And we need to know those capabilities because that's part of our overall AI literacy and that awareness is a key understanding tied in with capabilities, meaning what AI can do and how that's affecting society and how that's affecting the markets, how that's affecting industry. We need to know what to do to help our students prepare for a world that has this type of AI capability in it. Do we need to develop certain skills for market analysis or will they be able to use this tool? Now, we always have to teach foundational knowledge so that they can know what right looks like, but it would it be more important for us to now have access to this tool because they're going to have access moving forward and have them spend more class time developing their capabilities to use the tool incorporating that in some way. These are the key things that we need to be thinking about in academia because we are not setting up our students up for success if they simply come to us for knowledge, which is already available out there. No, what they need to come to us for is the aspect of knowledge, but then also the application of that knowledge. So if that means using these tools so that I can be that much more effective, 
then we need to be able to do that. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. It costs money and all these things. But this is what we have to work on in order to remain relevant in the field of education. So this is something that will continually be needed as far as our work and understanding. Now, that in itself raises up lots of different aspects and questions for us to consider and work on. Things like inequality, right? Not everyone can, can afford to have this type of tool. So we need to look, are there alternatives to this? I mentioned Google Deep Research. That's an aspect here. But what about students that can't afford a subscription? Is this something where the school needs to step in? These are all things to think about because these are aspects of the educational environment. So these are key things that I want us all to, to really contemplate and to, to consider. I would love to hear your comments. Please put that in there as far as what you think. Do you think this tool is something that's revolutionary? It's another application of agenic capabilities using this, this advanced model that is capable of reasoning. So lots going on here. So look forward to reading your comments. Please like and share so that we can continue to develop our community and so that everyone can benefit from the ongoing changes and improvements going on in AI. And remember, learning is for life.